Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello everyone Indonesia is an agricultural country and the world's largest Muslim population Unfortunately, the World Bank revealed that about 25.1 million of Indonesians still live below the poverty line Since Muslim is majority, how about the opportunities for Islamic microfinance institutions in addressing poverty in Indonesia? What are the factors that determine rural households in assessing Islamic microfinance institution financing in Indonesia? Islamic microfinance institutions have grown rapidly in the last three decades, including Indonesia. Islamic microfinance operates based on Islamic principles and over product and services which is parallel with the Muslim belief. The main difference between Islamic microfinance institutions and its counterpart is the prohibitions of interest. All product and services must follow the Sharia standard or call it Sharia compliance. Riba is prohibited in Islam and taking profit from lending money is considered as haram. In Sharia, Riba refers to the premium that must be paid by the borrowers to the lenders. The purpose of this study, financing from Islamic microfinance institutions evidence from Indonesia, is to investigate factors that determine rural households' access to finance provided by Islamic microfinance institutions in Indonesia. This study used two-year panel data set with logistic regressions to identify the determinants of access to finance by rural households. The study sample comprised of 289 Islamic microfinance institutions clients and 140 non-clients from East Java province in Indonesia. The clients consist of 111 rural households with profit and law sharing mechanisms and 162 clients with non-profit and law sharing mechanism. There are also 60 clients that receive both mechanism. Profit and law sharing mechanism is a contractual agreement between two or more parties where the parties share their resources in a project and generate the returns based on a pre-agreed ratio. The second mechanism is non-profit and law sharing. An example under this mechanism is Morobaha. Morobaha is a scheme used for short-term financing. Under this scheme, the seller discloses the real cost and profit of the products to the buyer. Negotiation of profit margins is possible and installment payments are common. Back to the study, the empirical results from this study show that age, gender, and income influence rural households to access finance provided by Islamic microfinance institutions. The results show an increase in age and income will increase the respondents' likelihood to access finance. Further, male respondents are more likely to access finance from Islamic microfinance institutions compared to female. Moreover, this study also investigates the accessibility of finance for clients with PLS and non-PLS mechanism. The only difference between the two groups of clients is income, whereas income is a significant factor that influences clients to access PLS financing but insignificant for clients with non-PLS financing. This indicates that clients with higher income exhibit a higher probability to access PLS financing. The results of these studies implies that Islamic microfinance institutions consider age, gender, and income of the rural household in Indonesia before disbursing its finance. In addition, about 38.6% of non-clients have the intention to borrow in the future, and 45.9% of the non-clients intends to apply finance for an Islamic microfinance institution. The main reason why non-clients do not intend to borrow from Islamic microfinance institution in the near future 
because they do not understand the financing or borrowing scheme of the institution. The novelty of this study lies in the unique financing accessibility between PLS and non-PLS mechanism in Islamic microfinance institutions. This study will be an important addition to the emerging literature on Islamic microfinance. The empirical results of this study is limited to data obtained from East Java province in Indonesia, and other provinces may show different results. However, this study is among the few studies that investigate access to finance from Islamic microfinance institutions based on PLS and non-PLS mechanism. Okay, that is the highlight of this paper. Please see the link in the description for further details of this study. Thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.